Today's NDE is from a woman who has multiple near-death experiences, many of which showed her glimpses of the future that she states has since come true, and also some amazing information she was given about a war in heaven and how it has affected those of us living on earth today. Note, so I don't get a thousand people all asking the same question. This NDE story is told in its entirety. Nothing has been edited out, and while she mentions posting to an online group, I have absolutely no knowledge of what this group is called, nor do I have a link for it. As always, you get 100% of the information I have. If this NDE goes against your own beliefs, please feel free to move on to another video. YouTube is full of them, and I don't have the time to soothe your hurt feelings. Thank you. I've had multiple NDE in my life because of ongoing health issues. Many of my NDE were narrated by an individual with a comforting voice. I seemed to know his voice, although I couldn't see him in the beginning. As time went on, I recognized him as my father in heaven. I experienced my first NDE that occurred when my first son was born after I began to float off the surgical bed during an emergency C-section. My doctor later told me that I had gone into toxic shock from contracting the Streptococcus B bacteria. My first NDE was rather quick and uneventful after I returned back into my body. My second NDE was extremely life-altering. I was in an airplane headed to San Antonio when an illness I had grew worse during the flight. I had a flu for three to four days leading up to the flight, was extremely dehydrated, hadn't kept any water down for 24 hours, and had just run between multiple terminals to make this flight. I felt a lot of pressure to make the flight despite being so ill because my abusive husband, that I was married to at the time, demanded that I meet up with him in San Antonio for a vacation he'd been planning on all year. He flew ahead of me with the kids so that I could finish visiting with family I hadn't seen in a while, before I was to join him in Texas. Shortly after I got onto the plane and sat in my chair, I knew I was in some kind of trouble. My body began to seize up and I felt like I couldn't catch my breath. Then after the plane took off, I began to feel extremely intense pain shooting through my legs. It felt like hundreds of Charlie horses, insane cramps, were attacking my legs. I felt really dizzy and at one point I passed out. But I soon realized that I left my body because I found myself looking down to see myself in the seat, while others around me thought I was just sleeping. But somehow I also began to see in many different directions all at once. I saw the aisles behind me and around the corner in the flight steward's prep area, all at the same time. I could see them making coffee, while I could simultaneously see the back of the airplane, while also being able to see many different angles of people on the plane, all in one glance. Suddenly I was outside of the plane looking in, while also being able to see different angles from outside the plane all in one glance too. It was very still and silent outside. I couldn't hear the jet engines. I felt no effects from the illness that just moments before paralyzed me with insane levels of pain. I matter-of-factly acknowledged that I was standing outside of the plane, without feeling any fear about the thought. The next thing I knew I was back inside the plane, looking down on my body again. But then as quickly as I was there, I was back outside of the plane, although the atmosphere had changed. I found myself in the air, but this time I was standing over a large body of water. The water was a deeply blue, like a dark cobalt blue. There was a wooden table in front of me with a book on it. I seemed to know what this book was. It was the Book of Life, and I felt like my name was in it. Out of my peripheral vision, I saw a white male figure off to the right of me standing on the other side of the table. Somehow I sensed that I should not look directly at him, because if I did I wouldn't ever want to go back into my body. So I didn't look directly at him, but I seemed to recognize him as the savior of the world. Off to the left of me I saw that there was a rocky desert island that bordered the water that I stood over. There was a man on the shore that was pacing back and forth, as if he was lost. I seemed to know him and felt like I had agreed to help him in this life somehow, although I was certain we hadn't met yet. 
I knew at that moment I needed to go back. I thought of my kids, too, and knew I needed to go back to be there for them. But before it was all over, I was shown several symbols and objects. I didn't know at the time what they all meant, but over the years I recognized them as ancient symbols of some kind, some of which have to do with music. Eventually I ended up back in my body again. For weeks after this NDE, the veil was still very thin with me. I learned and saw things for the next two weeks that were amazing and beautiful. But then after two weeks the veil was closed back up again, after I prayed and asked God to take away all the things I was seeing. I told him that although it was all so very beautiful, I just didn't feel that I was spiritually ready to see so much all at once. I felt that I was starting to lose touch with my reality. I know it may sound crazy, but I began to miss the normalcy I once had. I missed my normal mundane reality. I began to miss not knowing things before they happened. Knowing things ahead of time was absolutely thrilling for me in the beginning, but after two weeks of it, which felt more like three months, of knowing things before they would happen, having visions, dreams, intense premonitions, and fast-paced unexplainable experiences, I was starting to go crazy. I knew that I needed a rest from it all. It felt like my mind was starting to go into sensory overload. It was all so beautiful, but it was also too much for me to spiritually digest all at once. During the two weeks where the veil was thin I was taught many things. I was given a basic history lesson about the true divinity and infinite worth of both God's daughters and His sons. I was taught the personal responsibilities husbands and wives have to love and serve one another as true equals. I was shown the same responsibilities parents have to properly love, teach, and nurture the children God entrusts them with, or they risk losing the ability to be parents in the next life. I believe God personalized all this for me because I was abused as a child by my stepfather, as well as by my first husband that I was married to at the time, and I was deeply confused about the proper roles that men and women should have towards each other as well as what love truly looks and feels like. Over the years, I rarely have shared the experiences I had with this particular NDE because my NDE is so different than everybody else's I've ever read about. I never saw a glowing tunnel of light, never got the pleasure of running into my dead relatives, and oh how I would have loved to see my grandma Helen again. And I never got the life review, although I did see my savior once. I experienced more NDE over the years because of my constant health problems. During one NDE, I was shown a vision of Delta Airlines flying in the air. At first it looked like an airplane, then it turned into a seagull, and then it crashed. My husband worked at Delta Airlines at the time. I saw how the airline would go bankrupt. I was then shown that I would move back out west to the state of Utah. I lived in Georgia at the time and never planned on moving back out again. I also saw a tumbleweed blow by, then I was shown an area around North Salt Lake and then another area around an exit off of I-80 in Tool County, Utah. I also saw a baby girl. I was told that her name was Belle and was asked if I wanted her. I said that I did. I recorded all of these things on an online Yahoo group that I will go into more about a bit later. I found out my husband of 10 years had been cheating on me not too long after my NDE on the airplane. I ended up leaving him, and I moved back out west with my three kids to be with my mother in Utah. Shortly after I arrived, I received a good-paying job offer to work in North Salt Lake. Shortly thereafter my now ex-husband told me he couldn't pay child support because Delta Airlines furloughed him. The company was having financial problems. Delta never fully recovered after 9-11 and eventually had to file bankruptcy. A few years after moving to Utah, I met and married a man from Tool County. Tool is a desert community next to the Great Salt Lake, a lake that contains several desert outcropped islands and looks so much like the one in my NDE. We welcomed a baby girl into our new family less than a year later. My doctors had told me I would never be able to conceive again because the medical condition I had adversely affected my reproductive organs. But despite the odds, my last little caboose came into our family rather unexpectedly in miraculous ways. 
After I moved back out west, I struggled with a debilitating blood disease that affected the iron in my bone marrow. I had serious side effects from the blood disease, one of which caused my heart to fail a few times. I also battled liver disease, which I believe was caused by all the toxic, heavy medications my doctors put me on over the years. I was in the hospital off and on over the years and I experienced several more NDE during this time. Each time I had another NDE, the veil began to get thinner and thinner again. Somehow it wasn't as overwhelming this time around, with respect to the veil getting thinner. During these NDE I was either brought to a remembrance of former things or taught about the pre-existence, pre-earth life, in explicit detail. I was taught who I was before I came to Earth, my role in the pre-existence, the specific events that led up to a great war that I was told took place in heaven. Being a Christian, I recognized the story about the war in heaven from the Bible. But the war I was shown in my NDE was much different than the one I previously learned about. I was also shown how the war in heaven was infinitely linked to our temporal experiences here on earth. I saw how the war in heaven affected future events on earth, since all things are linked in eternal ways. I saw how loving family units were the foundation of heaven. I saw how our heavenly father and mother perfectly exemplified loving foundations in the home by teaching their children how to be eternally good brothers and sisters, husbands and wives, and fathers and mothers. I saw that just as our heavenly parents are eternal, families are eternal as well. After my last NDE, the veil became so thin that I now dream a lot of dreams that I believe are meant to further teach and guide me about the things God sees fit for me to keep learning. Like I said, a lot of what I learned in my NDE was centered around the war in heaven. I learned how the war in heaven is linked to what scientists on Earth call the Big Bang Theory. I learned that all of the world wars and major historical events on Earth are not due to happenstance, not by chance occurrence. These historical events are meant to reflect many of the same wars and events that shook the heavens before this world was organized and created for our earthly experiences. This is why we see in the Bible that what happened in ancient Babylon is prophesied to happen in modern-day Babylon again, and what happened to the ancient Jews will eventually happen again to the modern Jews in Israel in the end times, etc. I was told that these historic events and wars occur as wave-like events, three great waves in total, with many smaller waves in between. The original catastrophic event, Big Bang, unleashed lasting ripple effects that can be managed over by the gods, but not changed, in that they still must occur on some level. They must surely happen, just as a rock thrown into a lake will make ripples and those ripples will surely spread out and affect the shoreline at some point. The Big Bang sent ripples across the vast expanse of space, upon the world of worlds, as I call it, upon many galaxies and star systems that our greatest telescopes have never seen. The laws of cause and effect have already set these events into an unchangeable set of motions. Although God could not change the original event that set all these things in motion, God could replicate slash recreate and manage over the environment of the future battlefields that those same waves would later affect as the waves move through the vast expanse of time and space. I was told that God purposely altered space by folding parts of it into varying dimensions or by creating curves and wrinkles in some spots in order to control the waves more fully, especially with respect to how fast and where they move, in an effort to lessen the effects. I was shown that it was Satan who caused the Big Bang to occur. I saw how Satan was a highly progressed angel that God himself trusted and endowed with great powers at one time. I saw how Satan began to use God's own powers against him in order to do secret works of darkness. God had many enemies, but his enemies could not match up or compete against God's eternal power. This is precisely why Satan was the only entity who actually succeeded in attacking the kingdom of God, because he used God's own power, power that God gave to him, against God to hide his evil deeds. Satan even enlisted other entities from other worlds to help to do his secret works. Satan did not rebel against God all of the sudden out of nowhere, like some believe. 
He did so a little at a time over a space of years. But Satan eventually began to thirst for more and more power along the broken way. Eventually some of his sins even led to unspeakable sexual sins against God's children. He was able to hide his sins while still residing in heaven by using some of the powers God had entrusted him with to hide his offenses. Before being discovered his great fall, Satan was known as the Angel of Music, a highly progressed son of God who burnt holy incense and played fine instruments before all of heaven. But his sins eventually became too great to fully hide. When Satan's sins were finally discovered, they were so egregious in the sight of God that God did what any loving father would do in that horrific moment. He declared war on his fallen son after discovering the unspeakable sins that Satan committed against his other children. It was Satan and those that he talked into following him that fought back in that moment against God in the great war that broke out in heaven, a war that Michael and his angels fought back against in our primordial history. I was shown that there were three great wars that took place in heaven during three separate wave events with smaller wars in between. On a few occasions these wars spilt over into our earth realm, which can partly explain the increase in people witnessing mysterious explosions, strange lights, crafts, or falling objects from the sky, objects that don't appear to be commercial or military crafts in our skies. In our Earth's historic past, we experienced World War I and II, while World War III is thought to be soon upon us. Like I said, our Father created these historical events in order to recreate the original wave, to align the two waves together for reasons I don't claim to fully understand but have been told is necessary to lessen the final wave's effects. God does this to not only lessen the effects of the next incoming wave as the two waves merge into one, but to also test mankind, as well as protect and preserve his eternal children. But it is most importantly done to reconstruct the past, since Satan hid many of the events that led up to the Big Bang from God's view. You see, by the time God discovered what Satan was doing, the Big Bang event was already unleashed. So by reconstructing the past, God can likewise reconstruct the hidden events that led up to the Big Bang. Much in the same way a detective tries to recreate a crime scene in order to understand the full story. But God would not recreate such things in heaven, lest the sacred nature of heaven be forever altered. So, a terrestrial earth-like environment was needed to not only test the souls of mankind, but one that could help us to precisely unravel our primordial past. This would allow God to restore all things anew to their former states of order and appropriate degrees of glory. This great restoration of all things is meant to heal and unite the children of God and provide for a new heaven that is no longer corrupted by Satan's reach. In this respect it became necessary for our Father to manage over the environments on both sides of the veil, on heaven and earth, as the last and most destructive wave was set to come on through. In our day and time, the plan that God created for His children to come down to earth to live mortal lives was not created casually. There was great care and planning that went into it all. The final plan was universally accepted by most of His children in the primordial councils of heaven except for the spirits that rebelled and sympathized with Satan. God's plan for our salvation included coming to earth, receiving a mortal body, being tested to see who we chose to follow as our Father, God or Satan, as well as allowing all such events to coincide with the last incoming wave that was expected. I know this may sound strange, but I've also come to look upon my Heavenly Father after all my NDE experiences as my actual Father the way a person would look at their earthly father, because I was brought to a remembrance of him during my NDE. I literally have memories of my heavenly father and my heavenly mother raising me in heaven. I have primordial childhood memories that the deepest parts of my soul remember experiencing, similar to the way I remember my earthly childhood memories. I have memories of playing and splashing in a small stream next to a meadow with my siblings near my home of my Heavenly Mother teaching me how to play music and learning a lot about science, music and math from both of my parents. 
I was told that I agreed to give up the higher knowledge my parents taught me in the pre-existence in order to come to Earth to gain earthy, temporal experiences that would help me to spiritually progress and grow infinitely in eternal ways. I'd seen more things, but don't know how to explain all the things I have seen, and so I won't. I feel that I need to more fully understand some of these things myself before I attempt to share them. I do know this, that great changes are about to happen to our earth, both good and bad. These are the things that God has been showing to me. The intensity of the signs we've seen in the heavens like blood moons and increased solar events are in part God making his presence known to the world, as he is getting closer to aligning his world his time back up with ours. Most religions call this the second coming of Jesus Christ. I too believe this as well, because of the great unrest and wars that broke out in our primordial heaven, a savior was needed to pay the price for these great sins, one who fully understands all the pain and injustice that has ever been felt or experienced by anyone. Our savior will come again to the earth as one who fully understands the pains and the wounds of the world, having experienced those pains firsthand himself in the garden of Gethsemane. I'm not really sure why I'm sharing all this now. I've shared my story before many years ago, but left many things out the first time around. I shared many of my NDE experiences on a Yahoo Dream Group forum many years ago. At the time, I felt that many of my NDE visions and dreams would never be believed. So I disguised them all as dreams and shared them on that Dream Forum group. It felt safer to share these personal things in a setting where nobody knew me. The forum comments are still published online to this day, although people rarely post to the site anymore. I shared dreams, many of which, not all, but many of which were actually NDE or visions disguised as dreams, on that Yahoo site that would later come true. I shared the one about how I would eventually move back to Utah, how I saw Delta Airlines go bankrupt, about seeing the area of North Salt Lake that I would later work, how I was shown Tool County, and how I saw a baby girl that I would one day have. I think it was healing for me to tell my story somewhere and just put it out there, since I never had the courage to share my story with too many others.